We're so fortunate to have back on set with us Tom O'Brien, who is the Plymouth County Treasurer. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about county government today because uh, there's a lot of things that county government does, and people don't understand. I, I still don't quite understand the reach of county government and the purpose for it. So if you could start with what is county government in terms of the whole United States, and then more regionally, what is county government here? So you've hit the nail on the head. It's a regional form of government uh, that we have around the country. And it's fascinating, Julie, as you travel around the country and you go to different states, you recognize that counties are very predominant in those states, Maryland, Pennsylvania, Florida. In fact, people in those states identify what county they live in more than what town they live in. You were making a great point before we began the show that election results around the country right. come in by county. county. Right. They don't come in by I individual no, town. No, they don't. That right. would be crazy. It's a great starting point because if you think about that, if you tried to report the election results from every single town, yeah. you'd be up all night. Right. We'd never know who was going to be the next president of the United States. Right. And so that's a very good example of how county government makes things easier. Mm -hmm. It's a regional form of government where communities get together and effectuate economies of scale. Okay. Uh, and so what's happened here in Massachusetts, because we are uh, one of the original colonies yeah. and our towns are very parochial, uh, every town uh, does almost everything and provides almost every service to its communities, and that comes with a cost. Mm -hmm. What's fascinating to me and what I see as a trend in a wave of the future, because I do believe regionalization is the wave of the future, is communities are going to be pressed with a choice. Are they going to be able to continue to provide these services mm -hmm. at an increased cost to their taxpayers? Right. Or are they going to partner with their friends in their neighboring communities right. to provide those same services for cheaper? Right. It just makes sense. We all understand that if people partner together, mm -hmm. you can make things cheaper right. uh, it's and provide like, that service. like the whole idea of the regional high schools. Take towns, put them together, and you can offer way more um, advantages to the students in a regional high school than sometimes you can in a smaller local high school. And it's an excellent analogy, too, because there was a trend away from the regional high school yes. system for the longest period yep. of time. We're seeing, actually, that trend reverse itself right. uh, back to, well, maybe if we partner with another community. I think we all are, of course, familiar with Silver Lake, but look at Whitman Hanson right. uh, and what they've been able to do. That high school is a lot nicer because they're together than That's if right. each individual community sure. had to do it on their own. Sure. And think of how much you save in building one high school instead of two. Sure. So yep. there are savings that inure directly back to the taxpayer, mm -hmm. to the town, uh, and and to the students. And then there's so much more that they could provide. And not everything can be done on a regional level, obviously. But what are some of the m most prevalent categories that really work regionally? Well, and, and we're letting communities make that decision uh -huh. and, and let us know what they need help with and where we can help. Okay. The biggest thing and in, in where we see the most immediate growth will be on bulk purchasing. So individual communities begin to purchase different items, whether it's supplies uh, or uh, vehicle bids. And in fact, we have and run one of the biggest vehicle bid programs in the country mm -hmm. here in Plymouth County. So we have the Plymouth County Municipal Vehicle Bid. Mm -hmm. We go out and put that bid out for uh, with all the manufacturers for municipal vehicles. <clears throat> And then communities choose to participate in those bids yep. and effectuate savings. So we big have more savings, than, big savings. Yes, yes. right. Okay, we're we saving our communities millions of dollars. Okay, uh, if they Just participate in our during bid. bulk purchasing. That's and correct. that's because of the the contracts that you've negotiated. That's correct. Okay. We put out an RFP. We get yep. the bids back, but because they know they're bidding on three hundred communities, right, versus three, it, right, <laughs> right, versus three or yeah. one, right, uh, they lower their price. Of course, they. What's do. been fascinating to us is that it's communities outside Massachusetts that are now participating in our bid. And they're allowed to do that. And they are allowed to do that. Great. Absolutely, because we're there to serve a regional component. Sure. Uh, and so we have communities from Rhode Island and Connecticut and uh, Vermont and New Hampshire that are participating in our little bid, municipal vehicle bid. Process. That's awesome. Yes. Now, you also run the Registry of Deeds. So the Registry of Deeds is a county-run operation. Okay. We have the best Registry of Deeds, John Buckley. Yes, he's I think wonderful. we have the best Registry of Deeds. But yep. what's fascinating is it's the oldest Registry of Deeds in America. Yep. Our slogan is America's First Registry of deeds. Yeah. When you think about it, we have the first recorded documents of mm -hmm. land transactions mm -hmm. in the United States of America. How fascinating is that? Oh, and I'm sure I'm sure we could do a movie about that. Probably, what's in there? What's we in there? I'm sure is pretty amazing. Yeah. So towns that don't belong to a county registry of deeds, they have to have their own 
town registry of deeds? So what happened, unfortunately, here in Massachusetts is in the 90s, uh, a number of the counties suffered financial challenges, and yes. we can talk about that and some of the reasons that happened. Uh, however, there were seven pretty strong counties uh, that still exist and that remain as counties. In the rest of the Commonwealth, those counties were abolished. Mm -hmm. um, those registry of deeds were taken over by the state. Okay. But what we're finding is that the county-run registry of deeds had two advantages. One, they're able to innovate quicker mm -hmm. uh, because they're just focused on the operation that of area. that one sure. county. Sure. So what we found in Plymouth County, our register of deeds and his team, uh, they're doing techno technological innovation faster than the state is able to do it. Sure. Uh, we're checking out new ideas quicker. Uh, and we're also a little more responsive to our constituency. Yep. Uh, so we've opened satellite offices in mm -hmm. Brockton and in Rockland. Uh, they're not doing that in other regions because we realize in Plymouth, that's great for people that live in Plymouth yep. and the surrounding yeah. communities. Yeah. But if you live over in Abington or if you live in Hull, that's a long trip to get sure to it Plymouth. Is. So it's a little easier to get to Rockland or to Brockton. Right. So you're uh, providing that service. We are in satellite. Indeed. Okay. Yes. Um, another thing you do is you own... Um, you run and own the courthouses, right? With three you, of them in the common in, in you own Plymouth the land County. and the buildings themselves. We do indeed. Okay. Yes. So and you rent them out to to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay. They they've not proven to be the best tenant necessarily. <laughs> they don't pay, uh, although they're full getting market better. rate. <laughs> <laughs> they're not paying full market rate, and they don't pay on time, uh, but they're getting better. Okay. Uh, and yeah, so we have the Wareham District Court. We have the Hingham District Court yeah. and Brockton Superior Court. Okay. And those buildings are, the Brockton Superior Court it goes back to the 1800s. Right. Beautiful old building yep. that has been county owned. When you think about it, courts were run by the counties sure. uh, before being run by the state and taken over by the state in the early 70s. Right. So um, we maintain those courthouses for use of all of the Plymouth County residents. The state has been a better tenant, uh, but that's one thing that we can do. And it's fascinating as the state is looking at closing courthouses mm. around the Commonwealth. Yeah. Why? Because they need to save money. Right. Where they're not looking to close courthouses are in those areas that have active county government yep. because we've been able to keep those courthouses a little more functional right. and making sure they serve the needs of our constituents. And the county mindset is always to do things in, in, as efficiently as possible with as few as people as possible, I would assume. We have to, right? Because we don't generate a lot of revenue. We don't have taxing authority right. per se. We we do get an assessment from our member communities, yep. but it's a very small part of our budget. Yep. Uh, most of it is generated by the work we do. Mm -hmm. So the work that's being done at the Registry of Deeds, we collect revenue there. Although the state still gets a vast majority of that, mm -hmm. we could talk about that on another show. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the work product that we put together: the vehicle bids, the bulk purchasing. Okay. So the services that we provide, we effectuate economies of scale, yep. and that allows us to generate a little bit of revenue for the county. Great. So we are able to be a little bit more efficient. Okay. Um, unfortunately, our time is just about up. I can't um, believe I that. I know. I know. It's almost eight minutes have gone by. <laughs> um, so bottom line is county government is an augmentation, really, of, of local governments and a place where local governments can have economies of scale in purchasing power and in services, power of services. Correct? Absolutely okay. correct. I couldn't have said it better myself. Okay. All right. And I think what we want communities to do, the folks that are watching this show, if you're active in your community and you're seeing a service that's threatened because the town just can't afford to provide it any longer, the first is instinct isn't to think of, oh, maybe we should see if Plymouth County could do this. Yeah. Because if your community is suffering that challenge, right. I guarantee you a neighboring community Other ones is, are. is facing the same sure. challenge. Sure. And so whether it's you, you, the sky, it's limitless what right. we could do. Right. Um, but if you're seeing something that you want to be provided, maybe think of coming to Plymouth County government. County government is your friend. <laughs> there we you like go. to think That's so. That's our watchword. Okay, <laughs> thank you. We will have you back and discuss a more narrow subject next time about what you provide. Well, I think it'll be interesting to talk about the finances and some of the things yes, we're we'll doing do there. Okay, Because great. I'm the treasurer. That's right. And that's why this is treasury <laughs> We should talk about finances. With Tom O'Brien. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. And we're so glad you joined us tonight for these local stories. If you want to see any episode again, you can go to PAC TV's Prime channel on our website, and we're also on YouTube. Be sure to follow us on social media as well for more information. We will see you in a week for more local stories.